This is Matthew Cratters, Bitcoin University. Today, I want to talk a little bit more about soft forks and hard forks, and this is all in the context of the current proposed soft fork that has been proposed to limit op returns at the consensus level. First, how to tell if something is a soft fork or a hard fork. A soft fork will always narrow the rules, while a hard fork will widen the existing rules. Example of a soft fork, we currently allow newly mined blocks to contain op returns greater than 83 bytes. But after this proposed soft fork, if it were to go through, they will no longer be allowed in newly mined blocks. In other words, the rules have been narrowed, so it's a soft fork. After the soft fork is accepted, if a newly mined block contains an op return greater than 83 bytes, it will be rejected by nodes and not added to their version of the blockchain. However, blocks that have already been mined and were part of the blockchain before the soft fork will still remain part of the blockchain, which is good, obviously, because you don't want to rewrite the chain and change the history of transactions. And then there's a hard fork where you widen the rules. A good example of this would be the Bcash hard fork. Bitcoin's max block size at the time was one megabyte per block, but Bcash widened the rules to allow eight megabyte blocks. And doing so created a blockchain split or what's called a chain split. This is what it looks like where there's one chain before, and then Bcash widened the rules ending up with a hard fork. They lifted their block size to eight megabytes whereas Bitcoin kept its at one megabytes. And then of course there was SegWit, which basically increased them to four megabytes if you count the witness. But this is example of Bcash propaganda, so don't take this thing too seriously, but I thought it was a good graphic showing the split and showing what a hard fork would look like. The reason we know that Bcash is, is a failed hard fork, that's not just me saying that. Bitcoin BTC currently has a market cap of 2.29 trillion, whereas Bcash has a market cap of only 11 billion. And then there's a fork of Bcash called BSV, which currently only has a market cap of 451 million. Another way you can look at this is to think that current Bitcoins, one Bitcoin is about 115,000. Bcash has fallen so much that one Bitcoin is only $563 per for, per Bcash token, I should say, and then BSV is only $22. So that's an example of a hard fork where the rules were widened, at least on the Bcash side of things. If you're finding this video helpful so far, I'll pause just really briefly here to ask you to help to support this channel's mission. Hit the subscribe button, that does really help. Leave a like, leave a comment, question, suggestion for a future video, and share this video with a friend or family member. Now the question some of you have asked, can a soft fork create a chain split as well, a chain split that looks like this? Yes, but only if it's a contentious soft fork and not everyone goes along with it. So for example, there's the Taproot soft fork, which was widely planned, it was accepted, it was non-contentious, so there was no chain split at the time. This happened on November 14th, 2021 at Bitcoin block height 709,632. We can see the block right here. Uh, this was mined by F2 pool, ironically, four years ago. And if we take a look at the first transaction in it, we can see there's an op return transaction, for example, and it's a small one. It's under 83 bytes, certainly, and it says, good morning, taproot. So this is probably an okay use of op return. It's a very, very small op return that's used to mark something. But this was an example of a soft fork that did not create a chain split. We can see that there's just still one blockchain after this. Now, 50% of the mining pools, or in other words, 50% of the hash rate and nodes had gone along with taproot. And then the other half of hash and nodes had decided to boycott it, I think we would have ended up with two Bitcoin blockchains, two networks, and two assets, which would share an identical history up until that soft fork. So this would have been an example of a soft fork, in other words, a narrowing of the rules, which was what Taproot was, an example of a soft fork that still led to a chain split because there was not widespread agreement to adopt the new changes. But I think that even in this case, it's quite likely that one chain would have overtaken the other chain, unless the hash rate stayed at 50% for both chains which is not a very likely equilibrium. It's more likely that hash rate would begin to migrate to one chain and then everyone would migrate to that chain for fear of their work being wiped out and not getting the block rewards for those uh, those blocks in the chain that disappears. But we still would have ended up with one Bitcoin if this had happened. Even if it had been a contentious soft fork, it's quite likely one side would have won, but it would have been very messy, which is why you want your soft forks to be widely accepted and not contentious if you have a choice. And now on to the current proposed soft fork. Are you a Bitcoin Core supporter who said that you hated spam, but that it could only be stopped at the consensus level? 
great news, you now have an opportunity to demonstrate that you actually do hate spam by supporting this BIP, this Bitcoin improvement proposal, or you can always propose your own variant that limits op large op returns at the consensus level and helps to protect the network from Bitcoin Core's reckless behavior in rolling out Core 30 and blowing open the op return filter. It's also important to recognize that this is a temporary soft fork that would revert after just 12 months. And what this does is it gives the community time to deal with the fallout of Bitcoin Core and the large op returns coming from that. So that's another reason why I think this soft fork is not the scariest thing because it would be temporary. And then that would give us some time to discuss how we really do want to limit arbitrary data at the consensus level, at the mind block level. So we'll be talking more about this soft fork in coming days, but just wanted to get it clear in everyone's mind because there's been a lot of misinformation out there about what a soft fork is and what a hard fork is. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.